I'm glad to see you today. Good morning, sir. <laughs> I'll see you inside. Good morning. It's eight o'clock on a Tuesday morning and about 40 parents have gathered in the cafeteria at Wolf Street Academy. For most urban elementary schools, this would be a terrific turnout for a quarterly PTA meeting. At this public school in Baltimore, it happens every day. Cada familia puede venir por una bolsa de comida. Uh, aprovechen, vengan todos. Okay, that's different. Free groceries for any parent who wants them. And kids will all get their teeth checked for cavities today. Okay, let's get people out of here for the day. Welcome to what's known in education circles as a community school, where the school serves as a hub for providing health care, social services, and family support in addition to the core academic curriculum. There may now be as many as 5,000 community schools in the U.S., roughly 5% of all public schools. Running one can be a big job. When the possibility was first brought up with me about being a community school, um, I, I was the reluctant principal. I, I hemmed and I hawed and I thought, this is going to be one more thing for me to watch over. I've got a school that's failing. I've got uh, parents who uh, don't bring their kids to school. And now you want me to watch out over all this other stuff. Ten years ago, Wolf Street Academy ranked 77th among 100 public elementary schools in Baltimore. Almost every child was poor. 65% spoke little or no English when they arrived. Many families had trouble just putting food on the table. The difficulty comes that families who are working three jobs aren't making enough, uh, don't have the types of insurance, don't have the access to transportation that they might need in order to provide these basic needs for their family. Giselle Lundy Ponce is with the American Federation of Teachers, which represents educators in urban school districts like Baltimore. Poverty is not inconsequential to teaching and learning. It's tightly connected. Uh, to what happens to a child in school. Uh, it is no accident that wealthier communities have higher levels of academic achievement. Wolf Street tries to provide almost everything a child needs in order to be academically successful. I have on my board uh, in my office um, printed out a really nice copy of it in color of um, Maslow's Hierarchy of Need. And at the very fundamental level in that pyramid, before you get to academic achievement and self-actualization and all of that, you have shelter and food and love and security. If you don't have those things, you cannot achieve anything else above it. That's how you end up with dental screenings in the cafeteria. Community schools, uh, you know, is basically us attempting to provide the types of supports that affluent families provide for their kids just because of the zip code that the, the, the kid is born in. Um, you know, I doubt that there is um, a legislator in any state in the union that would say, it's not important if my child, if their teeth hurt. Don't worry about it. Go to school, take that test. So how does an elementary school even begin to provide all the services that vulnerable children need? First, they have to find someone like Connie Phelps Bozek. To look in your mouth. Ms. Phelps Bozek helps students and families get the services they need to support learning. The role of the community school coordinator is look at the school kind of from a bird's eye view and identify those barriers to learning that might be holding the children at our school back. When Ms. Phelps Bozek started at Wolf, one major barrier was the lack of dental care. If you went, say, especially to the younger grades um, and just looked in children's mouths, you would see a lot of brown and black teeth. And so it was something that the teachers were noticing a lot, um, that the children were complaining about dental pain and they would complain about dental pain over a long period of time. Didn't your teeth hurt? Ms. Phelps Bozek yeah, reached out to the University of Maryland School of Dentistry for help, and together they raised grant money that made it possible for dental students to treat the kids. Ooh, that's awesome. Special education teacher Katrina Kickbush saw the benefits of that partnership. I had a student that um, kept complaining about their mouth, and so I kept thinking, oh, well, it's just, you know, 
you're getting a tooth in or a tooth is coming in. Well, when we finally was, were able to get them to the dentist, we found out that they had had this cavity that they needed to be addressed. And that made so much sense. I, it was like a, this aha what moment of like, so wow. So once the cavity was replaced, all of a sudden I saw their academic scores take off and it was just amazing to watch this growth. The partnership between Wolf and the University of Maryland is emblematic of what community schools are all about. A community school is a place for the parents, for the businesses, for partnerships to come and to help support all of the children in the neighborhood. It provides wraparound services so that whatever the child needs to help meet those basic needs are met. And then all we as teachers have to do in a community school is teach them. We stage it over there, we bag it here and here. Food is a big here, issue too. Kind of One of the things our families struggle with is food right. scarcity. The ability to get fresh food, fresh meats, uh, fresh vegetables is limited. That coupled with the economic distress that our families can go through based on their employment, sometimes based on their legal status, makes it tough uh, for families to put food on the table. Principal Gaither, Ms. Phelps Bozek, and others try to make sure the kids don't come to school hungry. They serve three meals a day to their students. They keep an emergency food pantry for families who may need help on any given day. They host quarterly grocery giveaways with the Maryland Food Bank. And they help their families sign up for food stamps. It's about helping our families find the resources and the ability to take care of themselves. If I take it one, yeah, one juice. We've kind of approached the, the, the food scarcity issue in that way. Um, and again, it's, it's fundamental to what we do because if a kid's hungry, um, they can't learn. And helping Thank families you. has led to substantial parent engagement at Wolf. Yvette Monterosa is president of Wolf's parent teacher organization. La otra más importante es que, como se sabe que en la escuela es casi el 80% de latinos, Entonces, casi siempre toman muy en cuenta nuestras herencias y tratan de sentirnos como en casa. Wolf Street Academy is a perfect example of integrating um, immigrant populations into the culture of school. En el área del jardín hay papas. I think that when populations who have felt marginalized are brought into the fold and made to feel that their voice matters. I think that goes far in the way of not just academic competence, but making them feel um, part and parcel of their community, of their city, of their state, of this great country. One thing that Principal Gaither tried at the very beginning was inviting parents to a daily school-wide morning meeting. Morning. For the past decade, we've had 30 or 40 parents in our cafeteria every morning listening to morning announcements. You know, they hear, they see, they experience what the, the climate of the school is about, what we want for our kids, for our families. And then we've, you know, been blessed with a few strong folks, uh, strong leaders. Principal Gaither is talking about Yvette, who leads the PTO. There was a great moment when I needed to talk to Connie and Yvette was talking to Connie. And I came in and I, and I said, excuse me, just a second. You know, I need to talk to Connie. I talked to her for a second. Then I turned to Yvette and I said, you know, I am the principal. And she said, si, pero soy la presidente. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, okay, you got it. Yvette's involvement in the school extends to the after-school program, another element of the community school strategy. Oh, los días miércoles con otras madres de familia, entre cuatro o cinco madres, um, hacemos un proyecto de tres y media a cinco. Aquí hay, aquí hay, ponle el club. Ponle el club y ya Tiffany Judy runs the Wolf Street After School Program. The kids are learning, they're being stimulated, they're not sitting in front of a TV, they're not walking home by themselves to an empty house having somewhere for your kids to go that's safe is just a really valuable service for our families. Wolf Street so offers soccer, photojournalism, there. science, art, robotics, tutoring, and more. Aha! Eighty percent of the Very students good. at Wolf Does take advantage, including Yvette's third-grade daughter, Carmen, who loves playing chess. Carmen. Because you 
can't move here because she's still here. Or right. Pues ella dice que le encanta y más le gusta porque solo es ella de niña. Y que ella piensa ir a un campeonato este año y que aunque no gane, pero va a ir. Our after school program 10 years ago was fairly much a babysitting a safety program. You know, you, you were able to stay at the school, you got some snack, you got some food. The big upgrade came when Principal Gaither was able to hire a full-time professional to run both the summer school and after-school programs. Ms. Judy has made it work. We've noticed that students that are actually that are enrolled in the after-school program and participate in the after-school program, um, their test scores have gone up over the years, their attendance improves, and that's, that's something that uh, research has found across the board with all after-school programs. These are life-changing moments when a, a child finds a love and a skill and an aptitude for something like uh, violin, and they all of a sudden see the possibilities of what their life could be like. And all of their efforts are paying off in the classroom and beyond. This is your sister. My kids are coming to me and they're not hungry and their teeth aren't hurting and their mental health services are being provided so that they come to me and they say, okay, here I am. You know, I want to read, I want to do math, I want to um, be the best student I can be and I have seen such growth in them. Ten years after becoming a community school, 95% of Wolf's fifth graders were rated as reading proficiently. Though results from the latest state tests, now based on the Common Core standards, suggest there's still work to be done. Community support has been a big part of the school's improvement. The community school strategy is such an important philosophy because it is, it's, in my opinion, the way we're going to make a change. Education is hard. Making policy about education is hard, but community school strategy looks at its assets within a community, and it uses those assets to build upon the community. Principal Gaither says his school is built on some very basic values. I guess one of the things that makes the strategy work is a respect that one human has for another. One dinosaur was about to sneeze. I don't know if they didn't put it. Yeah, at a fundamental level, it's a love for one another. Oh, it goes across the whole page. It goes, ah, uh, It's the understanding that you're great how you are, and we want to help you be even more. All right, let's give a round of applause. Funding for this video project is provided by the American Federation of Teachers.